1929, Golden Arrow was the fastest car that had ever been driven on land. The average car went about 30 miles an hour. So Golden Arrow was built just for speed. It doesn't need to be comfortable, it doesn't need to carry passengers. So yeah, they built it quite low to the ground so that it's aerodynamic. It was much longer than I thought it was. It was also very bright. It was very shiny. I know a bit about cars, but that just pushed my knowing about cars past the limit. Seagrave and the Golden Arrow broke the record at Daytona Beach in 1929 and achieved a speed of just over 231 miles an hour. These days, 231 miles an hour doesn't seem a great deal, but, but in, in a car with very little safety, with uh, brakes that were fairly rudimentary, and they had to have ice that cooled things because it got so hot. The only equipment that he was wearing was basically a, a leather hat and goggles to prevent him from injury. And this is on a sandy beach. So it was a very, very dangerous and risky pursuit. His wife was there, Doris, she said later on that she closed her eyes when he was driving because it was so terrifying. I would feel very excited but like anxious because you're like if something's going to happen but you'd be so excited because you're like the first person to break the record at that speed. The sound would be so loud it would make you even more panicky probably. Well the films that, that we have the Golden Arrow run are from a purchase we made at auction a few years ago. And these are home movies that uh, Henry Seagrave himself shot. When this record run was recorded in 1929, cameras weren't able to record sound. So you only can imagine the excitement of the day just by looking at the, the expressions and the flurry of activity around. In the footage you can see the crowds, there's cars all parked along the sand dunes. There were lots of film crews with the hand cranked cameras and there would have been an awful lot of excitement. It was a big media event for its time. And it is a shame, particularly with the land speed material, that, that you can't hear the excitement of the crowd and the roar of the engines. So today I've been working with a local primary school um, with a silent film of Golden Arrow breaking the land speed record. And we've been using sounds to bring this film to life. So to create the sounds of Golden Arrow and, and the car moving, we've used quite some unusual sounds. We've been using a gyroscope for the engine, we've been using a metal food steamer for its wheels. We even got the kids to record their voices to make engine roars to really give it some excitement. We were like making different sounds with different materials. I created the sound of the ice going, going into the golden arrow. The next scene, they're filling some, the ice for the brakes. I don't have a car, I don't have a large bucket of ice. But what I do have is some scrabble tiles. You really wiggle your fingers in there. Sounds like a load of ice. It was really fun making like different sounds with like different things. Like pots, pans. We made engine sounds. Um, this is really useful for the sound of trees and young saplings growing. So Jurassic Park, the dinosaur eggs that were hatching, they use ice cream cones. Oh, I like the crunch of the Oh, celery. the celery! That's what I was going to say. If you are captured by a dragon, we can make the sound of them crunching us. We also kind of wanted them to get an opportunity to learn that, you know, with TV and film, you can use sound and music to alter how we feel and how we attach to people in our stories. And using just sound effects, they can change an event which is spectator worthy, you know, a fast car. And then they can bring in these sound effects and make it just sound like engineers having fun on a beach. So all the sounds that we created today will be editing down, making these sounds place within the scene. And with some of the creative interpretations nice. that we had with the young people, I think we'll have a new take on a really vintage film. And the fact that, that we can now put some sound to that, 
to bring that excitement really to life and to animate it, it means you're not just imagining it from the pictures, but, but you're actually getting the opportunity to feel as if you were really there. I liked when we um, got into like that theatre bit and we got to make all those different noises. I was excited to see the artist. When I heard it, I loved it. Because I love doing art. I was like, this must be from like the olden days because it's black and white. <laughs>